Hello everybody and thank you for joining us for the second of our Get Ready for EPA workshops. In this workshop we're going to focus on professional discussions and interviews and how to prepare for these. The session will be delivered by myself, I'm Jake Tween, Director of Apprenticeships at DSW. Morning everybody, I'm Alison Lyon, I'm Head of Apprenticeships at DSW. So DSW have 25 years of experience in the learning and development and assessment industry um, and we're very experienced in the world of apprenticeships endpoint assessment and we've been doing it since its inception. Um, at around about 2016-2017. We endpoint assess almost 40 different apprenticeship standards and we support more than 200 premium providers and over 2,000 employers. Okay, so I'll give you an overview of the contents of today's workshop and then I'll hand over to Alison to deliver the first section. So we're going to look firstly at assessment conditions. So this essentially describes the environment that you need to be in to undertake your interview or professional discussion. We'll talk about how to prepare and to pre present yourself on the day. So you're presenting the best version of yourself. We'll talk about the notes and aids that you can or can't take in you to assist you in your assessment. We look at the assessment criteria. So the knowledge, the skills and the behavior that are assessed. We'll talk about some of the questioning techniques that are used by the independent assessor as part of your professional discussion or interview. We'll then talk about some of the answering techniques that you can use to structure your responses to those questions. We'll talk about mock assessments, assessments and best practice in, in respect of that. And finally, we'll share with you some of our top tips to help you prepare for your professional discussion or interview. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about assessment conditions. So everything that you need to know about the assessment conditions and what they need to look like is detailed in the DSW toolkit and conditions for live assessment. So your training provider has copies of both of those documents. So if you've not seen them, please make sure you get a copy and have a read through them and familiarise yourself um, with the requirements. So you will need to be in a quiet space where you won't be disturbed. So a room with no noise, um, no phones ringing, no people coming into the room. And you will need to be on your own unless you are undertaking an assessment um, which has a panel interview. So it does have other members present. So you need to bring your photographic ID with you and you will need to show that to the camera at the start of the session. So... By that, I mean your driving licence, your passport or some work identification with a photograph on. Now, if you don't have any of those three documents, then you will need to flag to your training provider so that we can make alternative arrangements to identify you ahead of that assessment. So you will be required to scan the room. So you'll need to pick up your laptop and use your camera to pan the room. So, you know... If you're at home, make sure you're happy with that. Make sure things are hidden away if you don't want our assessor to see them. You will need to make sure that your desk is clear. So some assessments do allow you to bring notes in. If that's the case, fine, you can bring notes. Um, otherwise, your desk needs to be clear of any sort of notebooks and anything with writing on. So check our toolkit and assessment um, conditions for assessment around the use of headphones. So there are some different rules depending on the platforms and the technology and the assessments. So check our guidance to see whether or not wearing headphones will be an issue. So you will need to share your screen throughout. Um, so make sure that you know how to do that um, and you're comfortable doing that. You will also have to disable any pop-ups and notifications that appear. So again, make sure that you know how to do it. If you're unsure, then ask your training provider for support or ask for sight of the documents that we have that help you with technology setup. And lastly, um, you're not permitted to have your mobile phone um, in the assessment with you or to wear a smart smartwatch for that assessment. Thank you, Alison. So in this next section, we're going to talk about presenting yourself on the day of your assessment. 
Okay, so first of all, be early so that you're not rushed. Um, try to get there sort of 10 or 15 minutes early. And that just gives you the time that you need to relax and make sure that you're calm and you're not being distracted by work or anything else. Um, it also gives you the opportunity to make sure that you're suitably refreshed um, and that you can test the equipment just ahead of your assessment starting. So dress appropriately. So we're not saying here that you have to dress in a, in a three-piece suit and a top hat. What we're saying is just dress professionally and appropriately to your role and to the occasion. Um, we do sometimes see apprentices who turn up for an assessment and they're dressed maybe in sportswear um, or don't have the shirt on. I mean, they're fairly extreme examples, but really what we're saying is just dress appropriately. It might be that you've got branded work gear that you wear as part of your job. That's totally fine. Be ready to talk about yourself and your achievements and, and I know that this comes easy to some people and not so easily to others but essentially the purpose of this assessment is for you to get across to the independent assessor what you've done, what you've achieved and how you set about doing doing those work, those tasks. Um, so this is where your mocks are really important actually and it gives you the opportunity to talk about yourself in those terms because it's something that most of us are not really used to doing. Using positive body language, so obviously you want to kind of speak clearly and articulate yourself verbally, but your body language is just as important because you're going to be on camera throughout. So having that good posture and maintaining the good eye contact, those sorts of things that you would do in a professional environment anyway, you should seek to replicate those in your, your assessment. So taking time to speak um, clearly um, and at a good pace so you make use of the time effectively but also you're articulating what you want to say effectively as well and again this is where your mocks will come in really useful so you can look back on those recordings, ask for feedback from the person who's been the assessor in your mock and then adjust what you're doing accordingly. So have a backup plan so you might be the best prepared apprentice in the world, you've tested all of the functionality Every now and then we're human, technology is technology, Some, sometimes something unforeseen might go wrong. So where possible, think about those scenarios and what you would do in that scenario. So make sure that you've got a fully charged laptop, for example, but you might want to make sure you've got access to a backup one just in case anything goes wrong and that stops working. Or that you've got somebody that you can speak to in the office or at home if you need to. And finally, it sounds probably easier said than done, but relax and enjoy the occasion. So we want you to, to do well. Um, the independent assessor wants you to do well. Um, there aren't going to be any trick questions, so you should really enjoy the occasion and relax and present the best version of yourself on the day. Thank you, Jake. So um, notes and aids then. So what can and can't you bring into your assessment with you? So there are different rules for different apprenticeships. So it really does depend which one you're doing. So certain rules are set out by the government and some are set out by DSW as the assessment organisation. Now, they are all outlined in our toolkit. So it's really critical that you get sight of that and you check that and understand the requirements well ahead of your assessment so you know exactly what you can and can't bring in with you. So most endpoint assessments, professional discussions and interviews, um, you can take notes in with you, but we recommend that you're really careful not to overwhelm yourself. So we see some apprentices that choose to bring in the whole portfolio and then they spend most of the time with the head down, flicking through pieces of paper, your focus really needs to be on the questions that you're being asked and the answers that you're given. It's really down to your personal preference though um, and whatever works for you, but it might be better to have a bullet point summary of your portfolio rather than the whole thing um, with you. So you might find it useful um, to have a copy of the portfolio mapping document with you, um, either in paper format or by sharing that on your screen. So that when you're asked a question, you, you could ask the assessor which learning outcome it relates to, and then you can see which piece of evidence you've submitted to support that. So we recommend that you don't have too much information in front of it. So as I said, your focus really needs to be on the questions and the responses that you're given. So in the next section, we're going to look at assessment criteria. 
Um, and by assessment criteria, we essentially mean the knowledge, the skills, and the behaviors that are being assessed as part of your endpoint assessment. So from the DSW toolkit, you'll notice that the, the terminology that's used to describe these assessment criteria, they might be referred to as learning outcomes, or they might be referred to as pass and distinction criteria. It differs from one apprenticeship to another, um, so please do refer to that toolkit, and you'll see from there which is the, 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 the correct term. But Alison and I, for the purposes of this workshop, will use the generic term assessment criteria, which essentially means the knowledge, skills, and behaviours. Now, if there's one takeaway from this workshop um, that we would like you to take home, it is to, to understand those assessment criteria in full. That's the most important tip that we can give you today. Um, two reasons for that. First of all is your interview or your professional discussion is going to target those criteria. And secondly, sometimes the criteria can be fairly complicated. So there might be two or three different parts to an individual assessment criterion. So understanding those and those component parts is really, really critical. You're in a very strong position in that you know ahead of your interview or ahead of your discussion what specific criteria are going to be assessed. So there's no reason and no excuse really for you not to take the time to familiarize yourself with them so that when you go into that assessment, you're as well prepared as you can be. Now, for all apprenticeship standards, DSW produce what we call an amplification document, and that's included within the toolkit. And in the amplification, what we do is we seek to provide further clarity for you in what's required to meet each of those assessment criteria. So, for example, if the assessment criterion talks about applying different models and techniques, the amplification might give you some examples of models or techniques that you might want to talk about and discuss. Um, if the assessment criterion says a range of examples is required, the amplification will give you clarity as to how many examples. It might be two, it might be three. So we always recommend that you refer to your portfolio examples. We're going to probably make this point a few times in this workshop, but that's because it's a really important point. Um, Ahead of your interview or your discussion, the likelihood is, is that you've already submitted a body of evidence to the assessor. So that might be a portfolio of work or it might be a project that you've done. Um, and in doing that, what you do is you map that project or that portfolio to those assessment criteria. And in doing so, that's your opportunity before you even get to assessment to map your evidence and to say, OK, I believe I've met these criteria with these pieces of work. So if you always refer back to those examples from your portfolio or your professional or your project, sorry, if you always refer back to those examples, it's going to be much more likely that you'll have covered all of the assessment criteria in full because you've already done that in your portfolio and you're now simply giving those examples and talking around those examples as part of your endpoint assessment. Okay, um, so the assessor might revisit some of the criteria at the end of the interview or the discussion, and they might also ask probing questions. That's perfectly normal and that's standard procedure. So if that happens, don't be thrown off, um, but do listen to the words that are in those probing questions, and it'll give you an indicator as to what the, the assessor's seeking to get from you. Okay, so I think it's really useful for you to understand the technique that the assessor is going to be using, whether that be in an interview or a professional discussion. So there is a slight difference between these two assessment methods. So the interview is more of a kind of question and answer format. Obviously, it will be yourself and the assessor that take part in the interview. And it's very much them asking you targeted questions that have been prepared in advance. And those questions will relate to the evidence um, that you've submitted in advance. That might be a portfolio or it might be a project. So professional discussion is more of an organic um, kind of exploration of your work. So it's a two way conversation about your work submitted. So it's going to be a little bit more free flowing than an interview is. So both of the methods will focus on a specific set of assessment criteria that's probably predetermined in advance. So make sure that you understand what that criteria is. As we've already said, you can get a copy of that from our toolkit. So um, make sure that you do. 
So both of the assessments tend to be based on real work examples that you've submitted in your portfolio or your project. So therefore, understanding that criteria and understanding your own evidence is vital. And if you do those two things, you'll have a much better experience and probably a much better outcome. So there are no trick questions. The assessor is not going to ask you any irrelevant questions. It's a timed assessment and they want to, you to do well. So the focus really is going to be on the criteria that they are assessing. So as Jake said um, in the previous slide, you are likely to be asked probing questions. And if you really listen to the words in the question, it will give you an idea of which part of the criteria might not yet be fully met or indeed it may relate to the distinction criteria. So for those assessments where you're able to take notes in, there's nothing to stop you um, taking the assessment criteria and amplification in so that when you're asked a question, you can see exactly which bit of the criteria it relates to. So what I would say is take your time. There's no need to panic. You can always refer back to your notes. And lastly, Remember the assessor has to remain neutral. So it may feel like they're not encouraging, um, they're not giving anything away. So they might not be saying, well done, that was a really good answer. Um, they may just nod and gently encourage, but it won't be over the top. Now that does not mean that you're not performing well in your assessment. It just means the assessor is doing their job and that they are remaining impartial. Thanks, Alison. So I think it is really useful for apprentices to understand those approaches and techniques used by the assessor. So in the next section, we're going to talk about some of the answering techniques that you can deploy. So always refer to your work examples. And I said we'd make this point quite a few times, um, but it's a really, really important one. Don't ever give a hypothetical answer to a question and avoid giving sort of general, generalised answers as well. Um, with apprenticeships, it's really important to note that you are required to demonstrate the knowledge, skills and behaviours across everything in that standard. So when you ask the question, don't talk about, I would do this. You need to give a specific example of when you did do it. Um, similarly, avoid saying things like, I do this. We want to know when did you do that? What's the specific example of you doing that thing? So if you're approaching your endpoint assessment now and you think, okay, actually, I think that there might be one or two things that I don't have specific examples for, check in your portfolio because you should have the examples in there. But if you think, actually, I haven't, we would recommend at the earliest opportunity speaking to your training provider and they'll arrange for you to get those examples so that when you get to the point of your interview or your professional discussion, you've got those specific examples that you can draw upon. Now, we don't kind of dictate any specific methods, but there are a couple of examples here I think that are really useful, particularly in the context of an apprenticeship assessment. So the first is STAR. So it can be useful for you to frame your responses to questions using the STAR method. So that's where you describe the situation that you were involved in. You describe the task that you were required to undertake to resolve that situation. You describe the specific actions that you undertook and then you describe the result of those. And so what that does is it just helps you to give structure, it helps to set the full scene to the assessor, but it also really hones in on those specific actions and that's the key part here, is the apprentice, want, the assessor wants to know what you did and what the result of that was. Another model, model is known as PEE, um, and it's a similar model, um, and you make your point, you explain that point, and then you give an example. And again, it's that specific example, that's the key part. So don't be afraid to ask to park a question. So I think we've all been in that scenario when you're in sort of a meeting or an interview and somebody asks you a question and you just have, uh, you draw a blank, you have the brain fog. If that happens, don't panic. Um, you can actually just say to the assessor, would you mind if we just park that question for now and pick it up later on in the assessment? Your assessor will be fine with that. You can also ask which of the assessment criteria a specific question relates to. So if you're asked a question um, and you think, okay, I'm not sure what, what's being assessed here, you can ask. Um, and then in doing that, what you can do is you can refer back to your portfolio or your mapping table. Just take your time, don't panic, and just make sure that the answer that you're given refers to that specific assessment criterion. 
be clear about your own contribution. And this is particularly important when you're talking about kind of group work that you might have been involved in. So um, team meetings, presentations, projects, those sorts of things. It can be very easy to say, oh, we did this. But what the, what the assessor needs to know is what you did. What was your individual contribution towards those activities? And then finally, just to reiterate that point, think about the assessment criteria. So the question is always going to relate to the specific assessment criteria. You have those criteria in advance of the assessment. So the two things that you should do is, number one, make sure you're as familiar as you can be with those criteria. Number two, make sure that you're as familiar as you can be with your work-based examples that link to those criteria. If you do those two things and you take time to prepare, you will have a good experience and the likelihood is, is you'll come away with a good grade as well. Okay, so mock assessments. So we really strongly recommend that you do a mock assessment. So it's the opportunity um, to have, to kind of experience as close a feel as you can to, to what that live assessment is going to be like. So it really is key that you do a mock assessment. So some people might choose to do a mock assessment before they go through Gateway and use that as a test to determine that they're actually ready for their endpoint assessment. Some apprentices start doing the mocks after Gateway and some do both. I, I kind of think it's personal preference, depends on the time that you have available and, and what works for you, but strongly recommend that you do at least one mock. I would say consider doing it with somebody that's less familiar with you. So not necessarily the skills coach that's probably been working with you for the last couple of years. So maybe an alternative skills coach that's working at the training providers. So it'll get you used to speaking to somebody that you've not met before. And it's going to make you more comfortable doing that when the assessment time comes it's also going to get you in the mindset of speaking to someone that doesn't know you, doesn't know your work, doesn't know your team, doesn't understand the organisation that you work in. So you really do have to spell out to them and be really clear about what you have done in a certain situation. So we always recommend that you record your mock assessment and listen back to it. And I, and I know it's something that none of us like doing. We're all uncomfortable listening back to ourselves. But there really are some benefits from doing that. So it'll help you appraise yourself on how well you've conducted yourself and how well you've answered the questions. We talked in the last webinar about rag rating yourself um, against the criteria. So again, Here's an opportunity if you record that session for you to rag rate your performance and the, an the answers that you've given to the questions against that criteria. It then gives you that opportunity to tighten up on certain areas ahead of the assessment. So make sure that you test the equipment and the functionality of the platform that you'll be going to be using. So ideally, Use the same device for your mock as you will for your live. So if you're using your own personal laptop, um, make sure that you, you replicate that for the mock. So test it. So make sure your cameras work. Make sure your speakers work. Make sure that you understand the functionality of the platform that you're able to share the screen. And we recommend that you carry out your mocks in the same environment as you're going to do your live. Um, test. So if you're going to do it at home, do your mock at home as well. Be in that same environment, then you'll be able to make sure that um, everything works in that environment. You're not sat in a, um, a, a, a web, a Wi-Fi hot uh, black spot, etc. And make sure that you use the um, answering techniques that we've just um, spoken about um, in one of the previous slides. So you're going to have to use them in your real live assessment. So use the mock as an opportunity to practice them. The more you do it, the more familiar you will become with that technique and also um, the evidence and the responses that you're given. So if one bit of advice I would give is practice, practice, practice. So you really are prepared for that um, live assessment when it comes. Thanks, Alison. And that brings us to the final slide of our workshop, just to summarise really the top tips. So first of all, understand the assessment conditions. 
Um, so they're outlined in the DSW toolkit and the conditions for live assessment. If you haven't seen these, speak to your training provider and they'll make them available to you. There's nothing worse than seeing an apprentice who's really well prepared, who's actually brilliant at their job, and they turn up and they don't have their ID, for example, or they're not in an appropriate environment. So please do make sure that you're aware of those requirements in advance of your assessment. So understand the assessment criteria, and I'll say it again, this is the most important thing for you to take away from this workshop. You know in advance what's going to be assessed. You have that criteria in the work, in the toolkit, sorry. You've mapped your evidence to that criteria. The criteria can be complicated, they can be complex, but you've got every opportunity to familiarize yourself with them well in advance of your assessment, so please do that. Structure your responses, so take the time, pace it, um, and make sure that you've been really clear as to what the situation was, what action you took and what the result was of that action. Give specific examples of work you've completed. So don't talk in generalized terms and don't give hypothetical answers. Know your portfolio and the examples. So you should always be talking in the context of the evidence that's in your portfolio. The assessor might ask you for an additional example, or you might even say to the example, okay, that, to so the assessor, sorry, okay, I gave this example in my portfolio, but I have an alternative example I'd like to provide. That's fine, just, just have that conversation with the assessor, but make sure when you go into that discussion or you go into that interview that you have those portfolio examples to hand and you're ready to talk about them. It's really important. Practice makes perfect, so practicing um, your own kind of answering techniques, um, rag rating, so listening back to that, recording and rag rating your responses and really honing in and focusing in on those areas where you feel you can improve and asking the person who carried out the role of the assessor to give you feedback as well and be relaxed um you know everybody involved in this so dsw our independent assessor your training provider and your employer we all want you to succeed we're all in this business because we care passionately about learning and about apprenticeships um and so the assessment's designed to put you at ease, to make you comfortable and for you to showcase the best version of yourself. So please do be relaxed, enjoy the occasion and we wish you the very, very best of success.